Hi, it's Kate, and this is the first video for week 8 of Math 23. We're finally going to get started with some calculus this week, so let's review some of the properties that you already know. One is the limit definition of the derivative. We say that a function f is differentiable at some point a if the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a exists and is finite. It's referred to as f prime. And in particular, it's notable that if a function is differentiable at a point a, then it is continuous at a as well. Remember that differentiability is more difficult to satisfy than continuity. In particular, back in the days of univariate calculus, maybe you had some examples of functions that looked like this. And you used to be asked, where are the places where this function is not continuous? where you'd say here, where there's a removable discontinuity, here, where there is a step discontinuity or jump discontinuity, here, where you have an asymptote, and then when you ask, where is this function not differentiable, that gives you a host of different answers. Well, all the places where it was not continuous, it was not differentiable. The whole, it's not uh, differentiable. The jump discontinuity, not differentiable. The asymptote, it's not differentiable there. And there's also this extra place here. That little kink or the corner is a place where the derivative does not exist, but it happens to be continuous. So again, the derivative differentiability is a lot pickier than continuity. Just as with limits, because this particular idea of the derivative is itself a limit, it has a limit definition. And so a lot of the properties that hold for limits hold for derivatives as well. So the scalar multiple of some function's derivative is going to be the scalar multiple of that function's derivative. The sum of the derivatives is the derivative, the sum of the derivatives is the derivative of the sum. There we go. Ugh, the English is a little difficult there. We also have the product rule, which states that if we're taking the derivative of a product of two functions, we take the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. And then the quotient rule, which basically nobody remembers at all, ever, because we just use the product rule and the most memorable derivative rule down here, the chain rule, which states that if f is differentiable at some point a and g is differentiable at f of a, then their composite function, g of f, is also differentiable at a, and its uh, derivative is going to be the derivative of the outside function with respect to f of a and the derivative of the inside function. We multiply it by that with respect to a. It's also good to beef up our terminology when we're talking about functions, and in fact, a lot of the terminology is very similar to what we used when we talked about sequences. This applies to functions whether or not they are differentiable or even continuous. One, we say that a function is strictly increasing on a particular interval. If you have two inputs on that interval, and there is one input that is less than the other, and its function value is strictly less than the other function value. Similarly, a function f is strictly decreasing on a given interval if when you look at two inputs on, in that interval and one is less than uh, the other, it's going to be that the function value of the first input is going to be greater than the function value of the second input, whereas the first input is less than the second input. A function f is increasing on an interval if we have two inputs on the interval and the first input is less than the second input, it implies that the first input's function value is less than or equal to the second input's function value. And we say a function f is decreasing on an interval if we take two inputs on that interval and one input is less than the other, but its function value is less than... Oh, darn it. I really thought I went and fixed this typo. It should say greater than or equal to f of x2. If you've already printed uh, your outlines, make sure to make that note there. Otherwise, I'll go in and fix this uh, shortly.